Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. So, you want to build your own fish room? Stick around for my thoughts, tips, and tricks. Alright fishy folks, welcome back. Before I go ahead and drop some knowledge about fish rooms on y'all, if you could just do me a solid and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already, hit that notification bell after you do that, and then tell 10 of your friends about my awesome website, michaelsfishroom.com. Now this video is coming out on Saturday, and just yesterday, Friday, I put a few long fin super red plecos and short fin super red plecos up on the website so if you want them go to the website and buy them quick because they're going to sell out probably they're already sold out probably but go check anyway anyway one more thing before i drop the knowledge about the fish room i'd like to uh congratulate the contest winner from cookies fish room i've talked about cookies fish room it's a uh, a facebook group run by uh, my friend norm who happens to be a real deal marine biologist from australia so he's got that wacky accent uh but they had a contest and i i uh sponsored it i guess so the winner gets a, a pair of um red dragon guppies of course if she wants anything else just let me know but red dragon guppies congratulations kimberly Robertson Hicks. Just email me and uh, we'll work it out, Kimberly. So, congratulations. All right, folks, putting the phone down. Let's talk about fish room. So, you want a fish room. The first thing you need to decide before anything else is what the purpose of your fish room is. Is it breeding for profit? Is it just to have a bunch of tanks that are easy to maintain? Or do you want to keep a lot of different fish um, and you want them all in one space? What's the purpose? So my purpose was breeding for profit. So I didn't care what the tanks look like. I don't care what the stands look like. I don't care what the lighting looks like. It's it's a purpose-built fish room. It's not, you know, a fancy fish room where people can come and look. I don't really invite many people to my house because it's my house. My friends have seen it, but, you know, no customers have ever been here because I don't know you guys. Anyway, after you decide the purpose, is it essentially a showroom? or breeding for profit. Now you can have both, but the tanks typically won't work together. And, and I'll explain that later, but. So let's assume you want a breeding for profit fish room like I have. Now you have to decide your budget. Most people, it's as cheap as they can do it, which means looking on Facebook Marketplace for used tanks, dollar per gallon sale, no lids, um, cheap, racking or shelving. I used the cinder block and two by four method that I learned from Corey at Aquarium Co-op, um, I don't know, four or five years ago when he made the video, when he made his first fish room in his house. And I thought to myself, that's that's pretty cheap and easy. I can I can do it. I mean, cinder blocks are like a dollar sixty each. And uh, I used two by sixes. Um, now, what, what Corey, the only difference between Corey stands and mine are Corey's span is half the length of mine. And that actually turned out to be a problem. I thought if I used two by sixes, I could span longer and they wouldn't dip, but they dipped. So I had to put a center support here. You can actually see it right here. So the plan was to have um, four 20 gallon tanks per section. I can only have three and then a 10. That's why it's wacky like that. So now you've decided you want a breeding for profit fish room. You have your budget. Usually it's as cheap as possible. The next thing you have to do is insulate. Before you do anything else, you have to insulate. I didn't insulate my fish room and I wish I could. And now I would basically have to shut the whole fish room down to insulate the ceiling because I mounted everything on the ceiling like I'm gonna tell you to do in a little while. So I would, before you do anything else in the fish room, you have to insulate. Before you insulate, you have to decide where your fish room is gonna be. You're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a drain and a water source and power, okay? That means you either need to run outlets, GFIs of course, have an electrician do it, you do it, whatever. You need a drain, hopefully a floor drain because that just makes it easier, gravity is your friend. And you need a water source because you have to fill these tanks up, right? Preferably hot and cold water. Now I had all that in my basement. I had a little nook in the basement, which is where I am. 
And uh, I did this as cheap as possible. It's four or five years now, and I still have the stupid moving blankets. Uh, just recently, I got a couple estimates to build a wall. I've talked about building a wall before COVID started, during COVID. And uh, I had a, a very nice subscriber send me plans and everything, but I think it was just too much for me to handle um, to do it right. So I have a, a friend who's going to do it. He's a carpenter by trade. And uh, But building prices, building material prices, skyrocketed recently because of all the floods and hurricanes and COVID and all that stuff. So my wallet was probably going to cost 800 bucks said and done. Now it's like 12. So I'm cheap. I'm going to wait a little while longer. But So now you've figured out your budget, your location, your purpose. You've insulated. Now you got to start the, uh, the shelving. Are you going to use a cheap shelving like I did? Are you going to buy racking? Uh, you know, sometimes you can find the Home Depot racks on a uh, um, marketplace or what have you but i like this it's easy it's modular i can change it if i really want to um while you're deciding on this you also need to decide what fish are you going to raise because that's going to depend on your tank size and filtration now if you have a fish room more than likely you're going to use sponge filters and have a you know one big air pump run in the fish room i have two linear piston air pumps i upgraded from one uh old school diaphragm air pump um they draw probably half as much current together as the as the uh, um, other old one, and they're much more quiet. So, <clears throat> all right. Let's assume you're gonna raise guppies and plecos and shrimp, because that's kind of a, a thing, right? And uh, you have a linear piston air pump you bought from Aquarium Co-op. You have run your airline, PVC, Whatever, you gotta decide on your tanks, right? So, the minimum I would say for breeding for profit would be a 20. Why? Well, 10s are cheaper, but 20s are, are um, easier to maintain parameters, and um, there's more volume of water, and there's more swimming space for the fish. So, sometimes on Facebook I see questions, how many, can, how many guppies can I put in a 10 gallon tank? Well. I mean, I can put 150. You probably can keep 10, I don't know. So obviously you have a bigger tank, you certainly can uh, can have more fish in it. All right, so you have your racking decided, you have your space. Let's just go back to water for a second. If you do not have a floor drain, like my, my fish room is in the basement, I happen to have a sump pump in my fish room for the French drain around the house, so I've used that. But I also have, right over there, a washer and dryer that has a slop sink and a uh, pump for wastewater because it's below grade. I use that as well, I use both. Now, while you're thinking about that, you may want to upgrade your sump pump. Like, that, the sump pump that's down here took a crap six months into my fish room. I bought the biggest, best one I could to replace it because I knew it was gonna get a lot of use for my fish room. Um, electric. I talked about. I touched about it lightly, right? If you're, I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. I didn't even say Alexa, did I? Anyway, if you're not an electrician or not good with that kind of stuff, hire someone to do it right. You want GFIs. You want them high, as high as possible, where you can reach them. Less chance of water getting into them. Mine are mounted on the ceiling. I did it all myself. It's not really that difficult, but if you're not comfortable with it, definitely have a professional do it. Um, you have to decide how you're going to heat the fish room. I originally had a uh, oil-filled electric radiator, but I mean, it used so much power that it it didn't benefit me. Um, that's another thing you need to think about your water and power usage. How much of those bills going to go up, and are you going to be able to afford it? Now, everything in here is LED, so electric-wise. It's not that much. Linear piston air pumps lowered my, my bill about $5 a month. Um, I don't usually use heaters. A couple of tanks have heaters, but that's just, there really aren't that many. And then, and then the pumps, which only run a short time, right? So when I say pumps, I mean some pumps. So you have to consider that as well. So you have to really consider the location, obviously, your budget, what the purpose of the fish room is. Um, how are you going to heat the fish room? I had that oil-filled 
uh, radiator. I got rid of it and I installed a natural gas uh, ventless heater, which a couple people thought I was crazy for doing, but I did a lot of research and, and really there's no problem with it. I have a ca carbon monoxide detector in my first room and on the other side of the, the car, uh, the, uh, the wall. So how are you going to heat it? How are you going to water it? If you don't have water, you're going to have to hire a plumber to bring water to the fish room, hot and cold water, and you're going to want it temperature controlled. How are you going to do water changes? Auto water change system like I have, or are you going to stick with manual? Um, obviously for filters, like I said, you probably should go with air. Just run, you know, air line around the, the perimeter. I put it on the ceiling and then you drop air lines into each tank for sponge filters. I really like the aquarium combs co-op sponge filters as well. And, um, they have this black air line too. So as you know, I'm redoing all my air and water lines over the winter and I have the colorful stuff here. I have this stuff from Cobalt, which I really like too. I like the different colors. I saw it at my buddy uh, Alan's house at his fish room and basically said it's just easier to find the drops w where they go. If they're all the same color, it's harder to find them. But uh, Cord from Aquarium Co-op sells this black stuff, which is pretty high quality. I like as well. I'm going to probably use this for water lines and use this for air lines. So. Um, access. You have to decide... You have to make sure you have good access. You know, if it's in a basement, uh, is is the area going big enough to move big tanks? If you're going to have big tanks, um, if there's a door to your room, is it wide enough to carry big tanks and equipment in if you need it? Are you going to need a workspace? Like I pack fish, so my workbench, which happened to be down here already. I had it built. It was, you know, just my workbench for doing projects and stuff on, but now it's my packing table. Um, it, to be quite honest, I may redo it and, and make it more to what I like because uh, this is nice, but there are other things I want. So a couple of things to think about if you're doing breeding for profit. Storage. I have a poop ton of boxes that I use. I buy boxes. I have boxes from uh, UPS and from the postal service that I use. Um, so you have to figure out where you're going to store your boxes, where you're going to store your bags, where you're going to store insulation. Where do you store your extra tanks and filters? All these things you need to think about. Um, and that's that's just some, some quick knowledge about my fish room. Now, I know the questions are gonna come. What would you do different? I would do a ton of things different. This is already version three of my fish room, or four maybe. Um, I would do a ton of, ton of things different. Like I said, I would insulate first. That's my biggest regret is not insulating. Um, like I said, I'm planning on redoing the air and water lines to make it a little bit more streamlined, more neat, more efficient. Uh, when I do that, I'm going to switch out my old school Rainbird uh, irrigation timer for a more fancy Wi-Fi one that I can control from anywhere in the world. Um, actually, I actually already bought it. I just haven't installed it yet. You know, I'm going to be redoing stuff and I'll, I'll film all that for you guys. But that's just some quick and dirty knowledge about a fish room. So guys, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Send me an email, michaelsfishroom uh, at gmail.com. Check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out. All right, fishy. Ah. All right, fishy folks, before we get started with the fish room knowledge I'm about to drop, if you could just do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell, just boop, the notification bell if you will. And uh, tell 10 of your fishy friends about, you know, my awesome channel and my awesome website, michaelsfishroom.com. And then, I want you to help me congratulate Kimberly Robertson Hicks. Kimberly won a, um... Yeah. Contest, the word I was thinking for, looking for, thinking for, holy Jesus. It's almost like I'm on drugs. <laughs> linear pisser, li linear. <laughs> Welcome back, fishy folks. Before we get started with uh, the fish room knowledge I'm about to drop, if you could just do me a, a solid, if you will, and go ahead and hit that notification bell if you haven't done so already. Boop. The no, 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 no. You don't hit the notification bell. Oh my lord. Oh my days, as those Brits say. 
Welcome back, fishy folks. If you guys could just do me a solid before I go, no, no, no. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, all about my fish room. No, that's not right, it's not my fish room. I, grr. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. So, you want to build a fish... Mushmouth. 